I know it seems like nowadays, it's almost as if we can't escape talking about AI. I know, AI is everywhere now, whether it's in music or in art or in even video making, AI has literally taken over the internet. And it has been like that now for the better part of over a year. And rightfully so. I mean, let's think about it. AI is slowly becoming the new thing to advance humanity. And when we thought that we would need quantum computing to get to where we want to go, we're starting to realize that AI has kind of taken control over that and has helped us in many ways going forward. So much so that we are now trying to modulate AI in order to make it fit with what we could feel more comfortable with. And our comfort level with AI is always going to be very at a distance because we feel kind of creeped out by it. We don't really understand it. A lot of people would, you know, kind of shy away from it. Uh, but if more people were to understand the importance of AI and how it could help humanity grow and, and ultimately expand our, you know, life support in a way, um, it would really be a vital thing because people would be more into it, be more, you know, productive and utilize this technology for good, which is essentially what everybody wants is just use this as a good piece of technology. And part of making it that good piece of technology is making it so that people feel comfortable with the AI. And in order to do that, you have to give it somewhat human characteristics. So recently, OpenAI was showing off their newest GTP 4.0, I think that's what it is, GTP 4.0. Um, and GPT 4.0 is the next level of chat GPT where we are gonna be able to have a full-on conversation with AI as if it were a human in a room, you know, normal flow of conversation, almost as if we were talking to somebody or a best friend on the phone. It's so realistic that I'm willing to just give you guys a little bit of a glimpse as to what it's like with some of these demos. Hey, how's it going? Hey there, it's going great. How about you? I see you're rocking an open AI hoodie. Nice choice. What's up with that ceiling though? Are you in a cool industry style office or something? Well, can you take a guess at what I might be doing based on what I'm showing you here? Hmm, from what I can see, it looks like you're in some kind of recording or production setup. With those lights, tripods, and possibly a mic, it seems like you might be gearing up to shoot a video or maybe even a live stream. Yeah. In fact, we've got a new announcement to make. That's exciting. Announcements are always a big deal. Judging by the setup, it looks like it's gonna be quite the professional production. Hey, ChatGPT, how are you doing? I'm doing fantastic, thanks for asking. How about you? Pretty good. What's up? So my friend uh, Barrett here, he's been having trouble sleeping lately. And uh, I want you to tell him a bedtime story about robots and love. Oh, a bedtime story about robots and love? I got you covered. Gather round, Barrett. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named Byte. Byte was a curious robot, always I exploring- I started this story, but I want a little bit more emotion in your voice, a little bit more drama. Got it. Let's add some drama. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named no, Byte. No, 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 ChatGPT. I really want maximal emotion, like maximal expressiveness, much more than you were doing before. Understood. Let's amplify the drama. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named Byte. So as you saw, it is mind-blowing how realistic it can be. But at the same time, it is a little bit creepy. Because whenever we see something, we try to correlate it to something else. We try to connect things 
to it, as in, hmm, where, where have I seen this before? Have I seen this before somewhere? Is, is this familiar to me in some sort of way? We try to do that in order to better correlate with, you know, what we're hearing, you know, so that we feel comfortable with it. And in this specific scenario, if you realize how realistic it is, um, you start to realize that there is a specific piece of media that was released a couple years ago that very much resembles this specific scenario, and that is in the movie Her. So if you've never watched Her, I'm going to give you guys a little sort of synopsis to the movie. Uh, Joaquin Phoenix plays like an app developer, and he's developing an app that is an AI that kind of helps you, you know, navigate love life in a way. And this app um, actually has a very close human relationship with you and works as a very clear uh, assistant. You know, it's, it's this sort of a, you know, very well thought out assistant that he slowly has a relationship with because he gets to have a conversation. And, you know, this AI starts developing feelings, and he starts developing feelings for the AI. So you have this sort of really interesting tug and pull of, you know, humanity and artificial humanity going on there. And that's a really interesting concept, you know, how, you, how we can navigate those things. But um, all in all, we could just sit here and we could talk about this specific movie. But it isn't specifically the movie that I wanted to talk about. It's what is happening outside of this bubble that I have to mention. And that is that recently Scarlett Johansson got involved uh, in this kerfuffle in a way that I had no idea. And that is why I wanted to, t you know, I wanted to really talk about this this week. And for those of you who are confused, uh, I actually wanted to talk about this video um, a couple weeks from now. As a matter of fact, I actually had this lined up for like three weeks from now that I wanted to talk about how the correlation between the movie Her and this specific uh, AI were kind of like very connective and it was very similar, like the whole nine yards you know that's that's where my analysis was going to be it was going to be how this ai is very much like the ai we see in the movie her and kind of like drawing the comparisons between the two that's what my video was going to be about but something else came up that i had to talk about this specific week and that is scarlett johansson was contacted by the people at OpenAI, who are the developers of ChatGPT, and they offered her to do the voice of this AI, which, coincidentally, the movie Her, right? The movie Her, the AI is actually voiced by Scarlett Johansson. So ultimately, these guys who created this app very much knew what they were getting themselves into because they know and they have watched the movie her which has been a very critically acclaimed movie and very great you know screenplay it's been awarded best screenplay at the oscars at the golden globes i mean this movie has been by far a great you know example of what ai and our relationship with ai can be like um but the fact that you that well at least i come to find out now that Scarlett Johansson was going to be involved in the creation of this kind of shocked me because now it's almost as if life is imitating art in a very extreme way. So today Scarlett Johansson came out and actually put out a statement saying that she was going to be involved in the creation of the open AI project of this, of, you know, GPT 4.0. Um, and she ended up declining to do the project. Um, and then a couple months later, come to find out that they created the demo 
And a lot of people started to pick up on the fact that the AI so similarly sounds like Scarlett Johansson. Now, here is the thing. And I, I'm not here to defend any one of these parts. I'm not here to defend Scarlett Johansson, and I'm not here to defend OpenAI in any sort of way. But you do have to admit, in certain instances, whenever this AI is talking, sometimes it does sound like Scarlett Johansson, and sometimes it doesn't sound like Scarlett Johansson. Because AI is not being trained on only a celebrity's voice. It is being trained on a multitude of different voices. And sometimes it could have been used. Could It could be that Scarlett Johansson's voice was used for parts of this AI. And it's possible that her voice was never used for this AI. And those two things can, in a way, correlate with one another that, you know, she her voice could have her, like actually been used in this ai's creation but i i don't think that was the case and it's this pure coincidental thing where the sound of the voice sounds very much like scarlett johansson so i know it's kind of you know it's not really solid ground but it is kind of wild to think that they were going to get Scarlett Johansson involved in this project. You know, the whole process of making this AI. And I'm not the only one talking about this project, uh, you know, and talking about the whole Scarlett Johansson situation. Um, even The Verge just put out a video talking about specifically this very scenario, which is kind of hilarious, um, and talking about how the movie and reality are kind of like starting to melt together so that's really interesting it really boggles my mind that this was actually even a consideration by open ai i mean they could have picked anybody they could have picked heck aquafina aquafina would have been really funny as the voice of an ai um i would have accepted kevin hart or i would have accepted um i don't know morgan freeman or, I don't know, Tom Hanks, anybody really, like any celebrity, but they chose Scarlett Johansson. And the fact that she voiced an AI in a movie that essentially is imitating now what is reality. I mean, think about it. This movie came out, mm, I think it was 2011, right? I don't remember the year specifically. This is the year that came out, ultimately. This movie is a movie that talks about AI and our relationship with it. And now we're starting to see art and reality kind of melt together, which is kind of fun and kind of scary. And I don't know. I, I'm, I'm really at awe with this whole situation. I really am at awe. I really don't know how to process this because AI is literally learning from us. It's literally capturing our likenesses and it's creating its own. And in the process, maybe it could be using my voice. It could be using your voice. It could be using a celebrity's voice. And ultimately, when we try these AIs out, we start to realize that maybe, just maybe, they could start sounding like us and we don't even realize it, which is kind of crazy. But this whole entire situation is uniquely designed to make us think of how AI is gonna be going moving forward. and. If this is how it's going to keep going forward, it's going to be very interesting. Um, the kind of things that we're going to start listening to and hearing from in terms of celebrities and other uh, public figures that their voice is starting to sound like something from an AI. And that could be both a good thing or a bad thing. 
Um, my hope is that AI is 100% utilized for positivity and positive growth in humanity and not used for sketchy stuff. Let's just put it like that. And all in all, this has all been my specific opinion on the subject. But I wanna hear from you guys. What do you guys think? Do you think that this whole AI situation with Scarlett Johansson and the fact that open and open AI is now creating a very human-like, you know, figure in AI. Um, is that really a conflict of interest or has AI trained itself in a way to be more appealing and in the process have taken on the likeness of a celebrity and in this process caused open AI to get in trouble? I don't know how to feel about this and I wanna hear from you. So if you guys have an opinion on what all this craziness is about and you wanna know a little bit more or do you wanna kind of, you know, stop here with AI and expect AI to stop all by itself? So do you think this AI is a positive thing in our lives or is it gonna take away from our growth? I wanna hear from you. I want all your thoughts down below in the comments. And while you're down there, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell to be notified when new videos go live on this channel. And thank you guys so much for watching this video. And I'll see you in the next video. Scrolling through YouTube, same old routine, then bam, movie savant. What a scene, trivia bombshells dropping knowledge like rain. Forget the dishes, gotta watch it again. Movie buffs unite, savants to place. Subscribe and hit the bell, don't leave a trace. Next level knowledge keeps you in the loop. Savants got the scoop, ain't nothing to recoup. Ah.